Hi, everyone, and thanks for listening in. Uh, I'm not going to take you through a, a slideshow. I'm going to do more hands-on and demo and show you uh, basically uh, most of our product portfolio here. Um, you just had an awesome uh, presentation by Grayson on the Techman robot. And uh, I, I would like to show you the, the possibilities of putting something at the end of the robot. I know Grayson, he showed a uh, gripper on his uh, robot. We also, as, as um, Andrew explained, we also pr produce and manufacture and develop grippers, but we also have a lot of other tools in our portfolio. I have two uh, video feeds here. As you can see, one is gonna uh, fit, um, stream my table here in the robot lab. And the other one will will film or show you the flange of the robot. So I'll be changing some different tools back and forth, and I'll show you some simple uh, functions and features. We're limited to half an hour, so I can't show you everything, every function and every feature of the products, but at least you'll get a, a really good uh, understanding and idea on what we can offer you in terms of tooling uh, for your cobot. Uh, on robot, has been in the market for uh, quite some time. We've been part of the big uh, Danish uh, robot cluster since its emergence, basically. Um, we're today, uh, like, a, like Andrew said, a one-stop shop for uh, tooling and sensor technology for collaborative and lightweight industrial robots. Uh, our idea and value to, uh, to you is basically to reduce the time spent on deploying the robots. Uh, what we've seen is that one thing is the robot, you know, you want the ease of use, you want the safety, but if you need to spend a lot of time and spend a lot of effort in designing and programming what comes at the end of the robot, well, then you kind of lost all that um, benefit of having an easy to use robot. So those things go together. Of course, no tool without a robot and no robot without a tool. So let me get started anyway. Um, what you see here on the screens, one thing is the video feeds. On the, on the right-hand side, there is a simple, uh, it, we, it's an interface we use for demonstrating our different uh, tools. So don't, um, don't think you need, don't assume you have to use this interface to, to use our tools with the TechMan. Actually, um, as part of our, um, products, we give free software uh, that is uh, to, to use all our uh, products directly from the TechMan robot. So as you saw Grayson programming the, um, the, 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 what is it called, the, uh, the program, all those um, functions that he called on the list of the program, uh, basically we have these functions, I think you call them nodes or components. And we have all these feet for all features, all functions of the grippers or on the tools. We have those functions directly in the TechMan program environment. So you don't need to learn uh, another programming environment. You simply need to learn how to program the robot and you already know how to program my tools then. So let me get started. Uh, our best sellers basically and our, our um, oldest tools are these um, servo electric uh, grippers. We have them in two finger versions and we have it, we also have a three finger version for cylindrical um, uh, gripping. Uh, basically the way we, we, we mount and install these uh, tools on the, on the robot happens in our quick change technology. And it starts with this flange, as you can see up here. This is the flange that I'm mounted on the robot. Um, it comes in a single version, as shown here on the video, but it also comes in a dual version if you want to use two tools at the same time. This could be for machine tending, where you have to pick a finished part and then place a unfinished part in the same, um, in the same uh, cycle. Or if you want to use vacuum on one side and a screwdriver on the other side or whatever your application need is, you can now mix and match whatever two tools you want, basically. So once you've mounted your quick change, quick changer, single or dual on the, on the robot, the communication to the robot happens in the, this flange. As you can see here, slightly here, there is a little connector 
that goes into the tool changer and that uh, cable will go into the um, controller of the uh, of the robot. We all we have a small controller that we use to communicate with the robot controller. We call it the compute box, uh, and that's basically just a translation device from Gerber language to robot language uh, that takes care of the the communication and the setup automatically for you. So now we've established communication to the robot, the, the, the cable is mounted. Now you can take any of our tools and basically just click it on this flange. It will identify what tool. Christian, it seems as though you have frozen. It yeah, I was about to say it appears as though we are having a couple of technical difficulties, but he's on his way back. I'm here now. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. Oh, sorry about that. I have no idea what happened. I'm even hot wired. Am I not? No worries. Just keep going. I think you were about to All right. something. How, how, how long did we, uh, how far did I uh, get? You were, I think you were about to attach something to the flange. Great. Okay, so we've we've uh, connected the flange to the robot. We've we've set the cable on the compute box. Now you can basically click on any tool uh, you would like, and it will identify what tool you are having on, and you can start using it. So let me just click it on here. Um, as you can see, there's no cable you need to mount anywhere. There's no um, no yeah no cable you need to put. Uh, on the actual tool, all the communication and the power happens through our quick changer technology. And now I can go in and manipulate or use the gripper. As you can see, it's moving down here. Um, the smart thing about electric grippers is, of course, I don't care what shape or size your product is. I don't even care what kind of um, uh, material it is. I can adapt the gripper live on the fly to, to fit and grip your specific product. It doesn't matter if the if the product is this this size or that size. Uh, I can grip. I, I can basically grip it as long as it's within the maximum and minimum um, uh, stroke of the gripper. We can also set the force to a to a, a, a certain value. You have full force control. So if you want to grip an egg, you can do that. But you can also grip a piece of metal with a firm, tight grip. These are standard functions in all of our server grippers uh, to have force control, position control. You will also get the width in millimeters between the fingers. So you can always measure your part and do sorting applications on the fly. You don't have to have a camera or a sensor to, to determine whether you gripped the right size part. You always get that feedback from the gripper. You also, as a very cool feature, you have grip detection. Um, so if I, We'll just grip a part here. You can see now grip detected here is lit up and you can use that as a, as a quality parameter in your, in your robot software that, hey, I, I will not move on in my, in my program until I get this grip detected. Uh, so you make sure that you grip the part and you didn't lose it before moving in uh, or moving on in the robot uh, program. So just like the two finger over here, I can now change to uh, our three finger, which is um, typically used in machine lathe tending. Um, it's the same principle, gripping cylindrical round objects. We can grip, grip pipes from the inside or grip uh, pipes and cylinders from the outside. It's entirely up to you. Same function and feature. We don't mind what's, what's the size the the cylinder is we're just moving the motor to the position that it needs um, to grip the part so as you can see no matter if it's a three finger or two finger or basically any of our tool, tools the experience of mounting installing and operating the tools is, is exactly the same you don't need specific training whether you want to do a sanding operation or you want to do a gripping uh, application the, the way you mount and operate our tools is exactly the same. Um, so let me show you some more cool tools here. So one thing 
was our servo electric grippers. Now let's move on to our vacuum grippers. So in, in a typical packaging and palletizing application, you would use vacuum-based grip. Uh, the normal way of doing it is to buy a compressor, putting it next to the robot, draw a big uh, uh, air tube into a suction cup, and that's how you would grip. If you look at cost of uh, you know, buying the compressor system, maintenance, uh, you know, there are tube leaks, there are yearly maintenance on compressor um, uh, systems, um, and of course, the, the actual compressor cost. We've taken another route, and we've um, developed these two vacuum grippers that has the vacuum generator, the pumps inside of the grippers. So you can basically, just like the, uh, the, the servo grippers, you can click on this, this vacuum gripper, and now you're ready to grip with your uh, vacuum generator. As you can hear, I can start up the pump. I can generate different uh, vacuum uh, levels. It's a, a completely customizable uh, within the software of the robot. I can give it more power if I need more, um, uh, more vacuum. Uh, and what's really neat function here on both of the grippers is that you can split the gripper in two so that you can run a separate uh, uh, vacuum level on half of the gripper. It's much better shown on this, uh, the, the big brother basically of the two vacuum grippers. This is the VG10. It's the first vacuum gripper we developed. Um, we, we have a bold claim to say that out of the box, it can solve nine out of 10 of your problems. And the reason why we say that is that you can actually change the interface of the gripper by, by manipulating the arms here to fit your specific product whether it would be a sheet or a pipe or a, whatever part you would have, you can fit the arm position so that it can grip your product. You don't have to use this, um, this specific pattern of uh, vacuum uh, cups. You can pluck certain areas, only use one cup or two, or whatever solves your need. As you can see here, it's much better illustrated with the A and the B side of the gripper. You can basically split it down the middle and operate these two sections independently. So again, deployment time dramatically reduced instead of you know finding different vendors for compressors and tubes and suction cups and uh, vacuum sensors and all that. You click this on, you're ready to go. All right, that is our vacuum uh, series. Uh, maybe I actually forgot a last feature of this uh, smaller version is that if you do have the capabilities or I, I'm sure also e &M can help you with it, um, you can actually modify or customize the footprint of this gripper. This is a simple bolt pattern that you can design your own um, footprint. Footprint, not fingerprint. Footprint, this is just an example we did on a 3D printer here in the office. Um, you could mount it like this, and, and this would now be your, your footprint uh, with different um, suction points, right? So if you're creative, and if you want to create a footprint specifically for your product that the, the bigger version couldn't solve, this would be a really good alternative. All right. Then we got a, um, a gripper that is fully uh, focused on or uh, developed for the food and beverage industry. This is an FDA approved IP67 gripper uh, with a flexible, um, you see a silicone gripping um, part. So this is for gripping uh, products that vary in shape and size. It could be fruits, it could be textiles, it could be uh, different types of food. Um, we have some different blue um, attachments here to grip or to solve a specific task or product you would have in mind. I see there's popping some questions in and please don't be shy. If there are some product specific questions, uh, Lily or Andrew, you are welcome to stop me and we'll take the questions on the, on the go here. Um, all right, uh, now we, we're moving into the more, we call it process tools. And uh, 
process tools currently is uh, our screwdriver system and our sander system. So what's unique uh, about these uh, tools here is that they're fully electric. Uh, screwdrivers and sanders generally in the robotics market is pneumatically driven, means meaning again, you would need to invest in a compressor and maintain that system and pay for, pay for having that run, whereas these tools are powered by the robot and again click on and get going if we start with the screwdriver it's a collaborative design screwdriver fully electric here's the again the flange you click it on and it's basically ready to go we have an accessory kit that comes with the uh, with the screwdriver to make sure that we can handle uh, your specific screw so you have a, a wide range of different uh, parts and you can read this matrix, find out what type of screw I'm using, what size of screw, and it'll give you the parts and the bits that you would need to, to put on the screwdriver to, uh, to grip that screw. We also have feeder stations uh, to help you feed the screws uh, for the screwdriver to pick up and then uh, do the fastening or screwing application. Um, it is collaborative in its design, so there's no sharp edges, and it even has a movable shank inside of the screwdriver. So when we grip the screw, it actually pulls the screw into the screwdriver, protecting it from the operator and from the environment, so nobody can get hurt, nobody can get, um, get injured. It also protects the screw from if there would be um, somebody bumping into it or something, you know, and the screw goes, gets out of alignment and you, you wouldn't be able to hit the hole. Um, it of course protects it from all that. It has some different, uh, it has some limitations in ter terms of torque. This can go to five Newton meter. Uh, in terms of uh, specifications on, on all the tools and all the products we have, please go to our website and go under the product page and there's data sheets there. You can read all the specifications um, and all the stats of all the products there. You of course also welcome to ask <laughs> now, now that I'm here. Um, all right, then we have the sander. This is one of our new products. Again, fully electric orbital sander. It has a standard uh, Velcro interface here so you can slap on any type of Standard, this is just a 3M sanding pad uh, and it fits right on there. Uh, you're basically ready to go. Uh, it has a dust collection pneumatic um, interface here, so you can collect the dust. Uh, but again, it's, it's fully electric. It goes to 10,000 RPM. Uh, traditionally, you would, you would hook on a compressor again and you would fiddle around with the valve to give it a specific air pressure that would then give you a specific uh, RPM. Here is a simple um, software. Uh, you go on the robot and you choose, okay, I wanna run it at 6,500 RPM and the sander will perform that. As part of the sander, it has an accessory kit too. And as part of that uh, accessory kit, there's this grid changer that I would like to demonstrate. Now, I, I don't have a robot right here uh, to demonstrate it, so I will be act, my arm will be acting as the six-axis robot. But basically, this grid changer works in a way that. Oh, uh, <laughs> remove that. All right, that uh, it has a little cage here for for the the, the, the sanding pads, and it, it can go down and attach the pad. Um, then you would do your sanding operation uh, with the robot, and once you're ready to change the grid. Uh, you basically move the robot to this to this uh, position and remove the pad by moving it uh, linear or um, yeah linear um, in this direction, right? So this like a cheese grater design will then take off the pad, and you can now put another pad on. There are grid changers in the market for tens of thousands of dollars. This is a very inexpensive yet very effective way of doing it. Uh, and it's in the right mind of like real collaborative applications that you don't have to overcomplicate things. You can you can do the simple, easy, uh, even for an inexperienced operator. Yeah, last but not least, 
um, we have the gecko gripper, and uh, it's a very un unconventional, untraditional gripper. It's um, it's basically a, a material that we designed for NASA, um, and they're using this material up on the ISS space station um, to to pull out solar panels. Um, under a microscope, it's like a million small ridges and hairs, just like a uh, gecko's fingers. And it can grip glass, acrylics, plastics, metals, anything with a smooth, flat surface. So if I add force to my phone here, for example, you can see I can grip it. The benefits is here, we don't care about holes, porosity, airflow. And it's also a very inexpensive way of getting started with gripping uh, parts. Um, and easy to operate. You don't need any communication, any electricity. This is a, a completely simple mechanical solution. So yeah, that's it for me. I hope that get, get, gave you a little start, like a taste to our tools and our um, products here. If you do have questions, then let me know. Thank you so much, Christian. Um, oh. We do have a couple of questions. Um, and the first one I want to highlight is, um, someone's asking about the communication between the gripper and the end effector. You don't attach a cable. Um, how do they communicate? Um, could you explain that just a little bit more? Yes, so you can see the, the quick changer here. This is the part that communicates with the robot. You see there's a small connector here. That connector fits right on this, oh, this connector, and that's where the communication and power goes through. So they're a little flat um, meeting pair of connectors. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then we do have a couple of other questions. Um, do you do any specialty design grippers um, for specific applications? No, we want to move away from customized uh, grippers. We want to give you standard grippers that can solve a wide range of applications. This is the whole value proposition of our product line that you can pick up, you know, you get the box from on robot, you hook it up to the, to, you click it on the robot and that can solve a wide variety of applications, not only one part, one grip. There are customizable features to the grippers uh, or to the products. An example would be the fingertips of this gripper. These can be customized. You can screw them off and slide them off, put whatever fingertip on there you want. The same with the three finger. If you want to do an, a, a customized design of the finger that fits your specific product, you can simply screw them off and put whatever uh, on there you want. Same goes for the vacuum line, right? There, even though they are standard products, you can customize it so it makes sense for you. So more more customization, as in small changes, not full customization. Yeah, we will not design a custom tool for you. We will give you a standard tool that can solve uh, your, your need, basically. Alrighty, so it looks like we have a couple more questions. Um, how is the maintenance and daily cost of tools similar to these or like these? Yeah, so it depends on what, um, uh, what uh, type of tool we're talking about. Uh, generally, our tools are maintenance-free. Their uh, um, uh, their whole lifetime, uh, which is uh, anywhere between thirty and fifty thousand running hours, um, they are, all the gears, all the motors are certified to run that time without any maintenance. There are a few exceptions, like gecko, the Gecko Gripper, that can go about three hundred thousand cycles. Then you need to change the pad. Um, but that's, that's about it. Um, so main, generally maintenance free. If you look at a traditional uh, pneumatic powered gripper, there's, there's plenty of maintenance, especially on the pneumatic, the compressor system. Uh, talking about daily cost, my, my products um, are, are fully electric, right? So the only cost you will have is the electricity bill you pay, you, you, you pay on the robot, which is a small, 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 percentage compared to setting up with a, 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 a pneumatic system. Uh, the, the grippers are, I mean, the, on the list price on the grippers are of course also a little bit higher than a typical on-off um, uh, pneumatic gripper, but the value I give you with the features, the function, the flexibility is, uh, and, and to reduce that uh, engineering and design and deployment time, 
this crypto will pay itself off extremely fast. That that's awesome. Um, and then we do have another question about the typical industries that you see your tools going into. Yeah, so um, the sander, of course, sanding and buffering, uh, buffing, polishing, um, the 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 two fingers, the three fingers, mostly machine uh, tending, lathe machine tending. The two fingers are everything you could imagine, whether it's electronics, food and bev, um, mach machining, automotive, you name it. Um, the screwdriver, mainly assembly, of course, electronics. Uh, electronic is probably the, uh, the biggest one. The, the uh, vacuum grippers are uh, palletizing and packaging applications mainly, also all industries. And the soft gripper is uh, food and beverage and textile. Awesome. So wide variety of things, kind of something oh. for, for everyone. We've sold thousands and thousands of products, and there's not a single industry where we're not represented. Awesome. Well, that looks like that's the final question, but I we have just a couple more minutes. So um, if you have any questions for Christian, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box. Um, but I guess my only question for you, Christian, is if you had to choose, which is your favorite gripper? <laughs> I really like the three finger because it's super simple, but it can solve so many different uh, gripping needs. It's uh, it's has high IP rate. It's IP67, so waterproof. It's for its design, for its price, and, and, and you know, it's it just we hit it right on the money for the, with this gripper. It's awesome, and I would encourage anybody to try it out. Awesome.